G'day legends. Every now and then a band decides to record a project not to a click. They go the free time route and then later on they decide, oh, I wish this was to the grid because it's a little bit messy sounding. Now you can actually fix this. You can get the project back on the grid if it's not too far off. And sometimes even if it's far off, you can still get it on the grid. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Logic. We've got some drums that we need to get on the grid that are recorded in free time. I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's go for it. So you just need to make a new project in Logic and then come up to the control bar, right click it and hit customize control bar. Come over here, click on this and choose custom. Make sure you have tempo selected, time signature, sample rate. They're all the important things that you want to see up the top here. I've changed the sample rate already to 44.1. It was in 48 kilohertz when I started the session, but the audio I'm working with is in 44.1. So important to change that. Now underneath our BPM, we're going to click on keep tempo and we're going to change this to adapt. So our little tempo line at the top here should turn orange. If you can't see that, just press G and that'll pop that down so you can see the tempo. Now what we need to do is grab our audio files. So I've got these drum tracks here. We're going to click and drag them into Logic. Now see down the bottom here, we're going to click this. All selected files are stems from one project. A smart tempo multi-track set will be created. So let's run with that. And make sure you click create new tracks if there's no tracks in here. Okay. So now we can see at the top, we've got all these crazy BPM markers up here and it's tried to map out the drums and just get the tempo for each bar accordingly. So sometimes it does it pretty well and sometimes it makes a few blunders. So we're going to find out how well it's done it and then we're going to help it out a little bit. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to come down to our drums, select them all and I'm going to put them into a group and we're going to change this group. Come up here, click on settings. We're going to click on editing, quantize locked, and then turn everything else off. That just means that when we edit these, they're going to be locked together and it's going to keep the phase relationship good. That'll be important a little bit later down the track. Okay, so now what we need to do is double click on one of these files. I'm going to choose the overhead just so I have an image of everything that's happening on the kit here. Now you can see we've got our smart tempo tab here that we're in. This is where we want to be. Now what we need to do is come over here and click on this orange tab over here. This is going to allow us to edit the tempo markers. So let's zoom in down here so we can use our little slider. We can put the click on if we want to listen to it. In Logic, if you want to pull your click up and put it in the global window up here, you just open the mixer, click on all, and you'll see the click down here. Right click on this, create track. And now our click track is in the global window. We can turn the pitch up so we can hear it a bit better. It's actually done a really good job so far. So what we need to do is just listen through until the click falls off. And if it doesn't, that's awesome. It's going to make things a whole lot easier, but hopefully it does. So I can demonstrate how to fix it. So you heard just there, we started the fall off the click and it was starting to get a little bit away from it. You can see it looks like it gets back on over here, but through this section here, it starts to slip away. Now we have these different markers that we can choose from. So we click down the bottom here and drag. We're going to move all of the markers, which is what we don't want to do because that's going to disrupt everything. That'll move everything off the grid. So if it was all really bad and you needed to realign it, you could start with that and kind of line it back up. But I think we don't need to touch that one. We come up to our next one, scale left, move right. This is a pretty handy one, but as you can see, everything's kind of back on the grid over here. So if we move that one, it moves all of that stuff off the grid. So that's not really what we want. Up here, we have scale selection. So that lets us work on a smaller section at a time. This could be the option for what's happening right here. And then we've got move marker, which allows us just to move this one marker between these two points here and here. So you try and find the best option to speed this process up. For me, I think it's going to be scale selection. So let's grab this and drag it over and we can see these look a little bit better. We could drag this over a touch as well. That's looking pretty good. And we can just keep doing that until everything looks like it's back on the grid. And so if like that, we pull that across and this one moves off, maybe we just grab move marker and tidy that back up. That's looking pretty good now. Let's listen to that selection.
Sounds great now, the click is back on the beat. This is gonna be really important later when we move this all into one tempo. So getting these markers in the right spot is very important. Just makes editing a little bit easier as well. So you can see this one here is a little bit off. We can just grab move marker and nudge that one over. So again, we had a couple little things like that. So we're just gonna tweak them and tidy them up. You just have to do this all the way through the track. So I'm gonna keep listening, keep editing as I go. And if anything really dramatic jumps out, we might stop and have a look at that as well. All right, so we've gone really out of time here. Okay, see that? So that's where the start of the bar is. Now this is getting a little confused in here. So I think everything's gonna fall off the marker right here. Now the click's on the downbeat, so it's all out of whack. So what you need to do here is we're gonna grab the scale left, move right. Now this is gonna shift everything on the right across as we drag it over. So hopefully we're gonna line everything back up as we fix this weird section here. So I'm gonna grab this marker and drag it over to where I think this should be. Just quickly check that. So this marker needs to be here. All right, that's looking pretty good. We could probably drag that back a little bit and then we could drag this over to meet our kicks. I think we're getting close to being back in the pocket now. Let's see what's happening here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, this looks pretty good now. So we can see at the top here, there's a weird little BPM marker here. I think we need to drag this over maybe one more beat. Ah, see, we fixed that now. So that was just a little bit off. It was just making this bit a little quirky and the, the tempo couldn't really figure out what was happening there. Let's see if that's all good now. One, two, three, four, one. All right, now I'm just gonna keep listening, see if any more crazy bits jump out. But I think we fixed that up pretty good. So the important thing is like trying to get those markers as best as you can so that the click is consistent with the drums. Now this is important for the next step for snapping it to the grid. So if the click's lined up with the drums, even though it's kind of like moving in and out of time, this next step is gonna pull it all into time. And if we've got all of those markers right, it's gonna make it a bit of a breeze. So let's check this out. What you need to do is save your project now, just in case all else fails. So let's hit save and we'll come up to the top and go file, project alternative, new alternative. Let's just save this as Breathe Drums Flex Edit, okay? So we're gonna move into flex time now. So at least if this fails and we mess it all up, we can always come back to this with all our markers already set and we can try again. But we should be fine. Just good to have a fail safe. Now what you need to do is press Command F. Click on our slicing mode. Okay, so now once Logic has analyzed that, it should look something like this. And we see all these white markers are where all the different tempo changes are. We're not gonna flex time the drums just yet, but what we're gonna do, this is gonna blow your mind. We're gonna come up to the top up here and we're going to select all of these tempos and we're going to delete them. Now look, flex time has activated across the drums here and our current tempo is 120, which is not what we want. It was around 96 before, which is actually where I want these to be. So now have a look at this. You can see I've dragged it down to 96 and all of these sort of purple sections, they haven't been flexed as much as these white sections. This is where kind of like more flex time is happening to pull this all in to the tempo. Now have a listen to this. We should have a straight tempo now and the drums should be pulled in to the grid. Let's check this out. So if you wanted to keep it kind of sounding a little loose, you could finish up right there and you could keep that sort of little natural kind of like discrepancies in the timing, but at least it's all still to the grid. It's still set to one BPM now, which is pretty cool. Before it was sort of bouncing all over the place, a few BPMs here and there, 
Now it's pretty tight. Now we can tighten this up even further. We can flex time the drums. Okay, so let's save this. And now let's make a new alternative. Let's call this flex time editing. So now we're gonna edit in flex time and make this really tight. Now if you've never used flex time before, I'll just give you a quick rundown of how this works. I also have another video on this, which you can watch. I'll have a link to that in the description below. Okay, so we wanna flex time the drums and make them nice and tight. Now, what we need to do is we're gonna to have to flatten this down because check this out, when you try and flex time these, it goes really crazy. And I think that's just because of all the adaptive tempo stuff. It just makes it a little quirky. But if we click on 16th notes up here in quantize, everything just moved completely off grid. So we don't want that. That's definitely not what we want. So it's clear to me that we have to flatten this down. We have to get this into a new audio file with these edits that we've made where we've changed the tempo before we can dive into a more detailed flex time edit. So to be able to do that, the quickest way is to just like put a cut at the end of your track. So you come up here, press command, we're just gonna cut this, put a little cut on the end here, and then we're just gonna join all of these regions together. The other option could be to just like export these tracks out of Logic and then just make a new session and start flex timing in that. I'm just gonna do it right here. We've got an alternative version that we can always come back to if we need to. So let's just do it right here. So now that we've got that little cut, we can just drag over, highlight all of this. And what we wanna do is hit J and we're gonna join these together. Now what that's doing essentially is it's bouncing these in place and joining those audio files up and it's writing all of these flex edits to the audio file. So just a quick little hack to just kind of like hard write this stuff to the audio. So now we've got everything kind of done with the adaptive tempo. Let's just come up to the top and change it to keep. Now we've gotten rid of our adaptive tempo stuff. We've got one clean tempo all the way through. And all of that flex time that was holding the drums in time with our new tempo has now been written to these audio files. So now what we can do is we can turn flex time off and then we'll turn it back on. And it's gonna reanalyze our drums and then we'll be able to actually just go in and start flex timing these. Because we're working with 30 second notes here when we've got these fast rolls rather than being 16th notes we need to make sure we can see 30 second note markers. So up the top here, I've chosen 30 second notes so that I can see the markers down here. But when we edit this, I'm not gonna use 30 second notes because there's only a couple of places where there's a few rolls. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose 16th notes, which is mostly what's happening here with the kicks and snares. And I wanna make sure that stuff snaps to the grid a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. If I choose 30 second notes, there's probably a higher chance that a few of these notes are gonna get pulled to the wrong marker and I'd rather just manually fix a couple little rolls rather than have to fix a lot of stuff all the way through. So without further ado, let's flex time these drums and get them nice and tight. So we're gonna click on our audio files. And they're gonna get all selected because they're in a group. We're gonna come up to the top left over here, make sure you open the region tab, come down to quantize, and we're gonna hit 16th notes. Now you can see that looks much better now. It hasn't snapped it and gone crazy. It's just pulled everything in a little bit. Now, I don't think we wanna make this 100% perfect. So I'm gonna just choose to opt it for like 70%. I know these guys like it not too tight. Like they like a little bit of natural feel to it. So 70% should keep it kind of sounding okay. Now we can see at the start here, the roll has some kind of like messy kicks in it. I don't think that's gonna to matter too much. I think it's part of like, you know, the feel here. Yeah, it still sounds cool. If you wanted to, you could try just moving the kick around which might create some little phase issue. So I press Command G and it turns the group off. Now I can just affect this file without it affecting all of our drum tracks. And we can drag this back closer to the marker. Now the kick's not gonna be in line with the room or the overheads, but let's see how it sounds anyway. You can totally get away with that. It doesn't sound bad at all. The phase issues if they're there are not happening for long enough to be like, what's happening to the kick? Zill has that pulse and the roll, sounds a little bit tighter. I think we will leave it like that and just see how it turns out. Press Command G, back into our group. It's not ideal, but the kick's too far away to kind of like group edit it. You can see it's like almost on the second snare here where it needs to be a whole snare back. So you kind of either have to do some really drastic editing or you can just try and move the kick itself and just hope that it sounds all right, which I think that does. That's fine. So my second tool is always the eraser when I'm working in flex time, just so I can quickly remove flex markers if I don't like what they're doing. You know, it sounded a little quirky there. We'll get rid of that one. So 
So because we spent a bit of time getting those tempo markers in the right place, a lot of this stuff is gonna line up really easily. That's wrong, let's get rid of that. That needs to be a 30 second note, but we can just erase that and just leave it kind of sounding natural. It doesn't have to be perfect. So at the moment, the markers are reading the room. We could probably turn room off and get a bit of a more accurate read. Even over the kick is probably not super important. So by clicking on these green cues on the side here, we can decide what flex is working off of. Definitely the room's probably not a good one to have in there. So removing that might tidy this up a little bit. That roll could be a little tighter. Basically that's it. We're just gonna work our way through, just get rid of anything that we don't like the sound of, erase markers, you can just click and drag and add markers if something's a little bit out of time, you can fix it up. That's basically all you need to do here until we get to the end. So that's what I'm gonna do is just listen through, fix up any edits that are a little bit off, tidy things up, and then at the end we should have a nice tidy drum track. Okay, so this is basically our finished track now. We've got it to one tempo, we've flexed it to make sure it's nice and tidy, and now these are ready to be exported and sent back to the client so they can start tracking over this and get that performance nice and tight now. So I'm gonna leave these flex edits just in case there's any issues or you know they like they don't want the kick at the start to have been edited like that. I can just come back and quickly fix it. So I'm gonna leave my edits here and then again make a new alternative and we'll just call this Breathe Drums Final. Okay, so save that. So what I'm gonna do is flatten these down so I have a copy of these drums with the flex edits hard written to them, just in case for whatever reason flex time messes up in the other version and you know, it, it all goes weird. I don't wanna have to do it again and I wanna just have a hard copy of this. So again, we're just gonna put a slice at the end of the track like I've done here and then we're gonna highlight these and then we're gonna hit join and join it together. Write all these edits to the audio file. That way we've got a hard copy of this, destructively edited, it's here the flex edits are written to it. We're never gonna lose them. Okay, let's do just a quick double check of how this sounds. You know, I haven't done anything to these. This has just been dropped in, but you know, we could pan our overheads out and we could turn a couple of these mics down to make it sound a little bit nicer. All right, sounding good, sounding tidy. So hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you guys wanna help support this channel while leveling up your mixing skills and also getting some awesome sounds to work with, then you should check out the link in the description below to my website. Check out my range of drum samples and mixing courses. Grabbing any of those is a massive support. Anytime you need to grab a piece of gear, use that Sweetwater affiliate link in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but a small commission comes back to the channel. And that's just a great way of supporting the time that goes into making videos like this. If you're interested in sticking around for another video where I mix some drums using Logic stock plugins, then check this next one out. <laughs>